Hello, um, so this particular one that we're looking at now is to do with monohybrid crosses and looking at complete dominance. Uh, this is a bit of a refresher before we move on to some of the other concepts um, because the other concepts build on this. So the first thing that you need to remember is that um, chromosomes exist in pairs. Now this was covered in one of the earliest slide shows that um, have been posted on YouTube. Um, this particular case here, we have our two homo um, homologous chromosomes, and they carry the same genes. All right, so we've got two copies of every single gene: one copy on one of our sets of chromosomes, and the other copy on the other one. Also. One of the chromosomes is inherited from your dad's sperm, and the other one is inherited from your mum's egg. And when they fuse together, we get this chromosome and this chromosome there, and they form a homologous pair here. Okay, so that's why we got two sets of every gene. Now, although we have two sets of other, uh, every gene, these genes can exist in different forms, and different forms of genes are called alleles. And alleles, when we're doing these sorts of things, are represented by letters. And we use a capital letter to represent what we call a dominant allele, and a lowercase letter to represent what we call a recessive allele. Now, a dominant allele is always shown if it is present. So, we have a homologous pair of chromosomes. On one chromosome we got that, and the other chromosome we got that. Here we go, we've got a big B on that chromosome and a little B on that chromosome. Because we've got a big B, it means that we're going to be expressing whatever that codes for. So let's say that codes for black fur. So that means that this individual will have black fur. Okay. Another form of that that would produce an individual with black fur would be someone with two big Bs. Okay. Now, the recessive allele, the, in this situation, you only get this allele expressed if it's paired with another recessive allele. Otherwise, you'll only see the dominant trait. Okay. So let's say the little b represents white fur. So the only time that you get an individual with white fur is if they've got two recessive alleles. Otherwise, it's masked out by the dominant one. All right. Now then, we're going to use bunnies, cute little bunnies to um, sort of demonstrate the next thing. All right, so some more terminology, phenotype. Now, phenotype basically refers to their physical traits, how their traits are expressed physically. So in this case, we have a black fur bunny, and over here, we've got a white fur bunny. Now, I've kept the same sort of... Um, lettering to represent the different phenotypes for the genotype. Now the genotype is the alleles that the individual is carrying, the genes, the alleles that the individual is carrying. Okay. Now in this example, I've given this person, uh, this bunny, sorry, not person, it's a bunny, um, this bunny, big B, big B. Well, this bunny, little B, little B. Now, if you remember, I use the lowercase letters to represent recessive alleles. The only time that you'll end up with a white bunny is if you've got two little bees next to each other. If we have a black bunny, it could be big B, big B, or maybe big B, little B. Right. Now, this bunny, let's make it the male. There we go. In his testes, meiosis happens. And if you remember from one of the earlier slides, um, slide shows meiosis, um, you get um, the halving of the DNA, basically. So it means that half of the chromosomes end up in one gamete and half in another gamete. So um, here we have everything in pairs, and here we have everything singularly. Okay? We call this when everything's in pairs, all of the chromosomes are homologous and in pairs, 
diploid. Die for two. Diploid. And the gametes, because they're all on their own, every single chromosome is on its own, we call that haploid. Ha! That part is for half. Okay? That's one way of remembering. Haploid. Okay. Now then, let's make this individual the female. So there are the possible gametes for the female. <clears throat> now during fertilization, these gametes will fuse together. So that's what these arrows are for. Let's say that this sperm fuses with this egg. Because we got the big B from dad, and we've got a little B chromosome from mum. They combine. We now have a 2N, a diploid individual again. And that individual has inherited the big B from dad and the little B from mum, giving them the genotype big B, little b. Now, because big B is dominant, that individual will be black. And you repeat the process again for this particular one and this particular one, and you do all the possible combinations. Now, because there's only one type of gamete possible for this individual and one type of gamete for this individual. We're going to end up with all of the offspring being the same, being 100% heterozygous black. All right, but there's a quicker way, an easier way, without drawing lots of arrows and things like that. So. We've got the same situation. We've got the male who has big B, big B, and we've got the female who's little b, little b, so the male is black phenotype, and the female has a white phenotype, their physical traits phenotype, genotype, big B, big B, genotype, little b, little b over here. And then we have to work out what the gametes are. So over here is where we put the gametes. We put them in this grid. We call it a Punnett square. It's named after a scientist. His name was Punnett too, strangely enough. Now, there's only one kind of gamete possible, big B and big B. So this is the area that you put the uh, gametes into. The gametes that this individual can produce are little bees. So here's an egg and here's another egg, okay, from the female. Now, if that sperm fuses with that egg, we end up with a big B from the dad and a little b from the mum. So that's why we get that genotype, big b, little b. In this situation here, we get the big b from the dad and a little b from the mum. That's why we end up with big b, little b. Again, we repeat the process. We get a big b from the dad and we get a little b from the mum. And then again, over here, we get a big B from the dad. We get a little B from the mum. And just the same as before, we end up with every single time we do a combination, we end up with the same thing, big B, little B. So there is a 100% chance that the individual will be black -furred. <clears throat> All right, let's try another example. Okay, same but different. Let's say we end up with two black individuals and they're both heterozygous. All right, so here's a new term, heterozygous. Heterozygous basically means that you have a pair of alleles, but those alleles are different. Hetero for different. Okay, now we do the same thing here. But this time we've got two possible gametes that can be produced from the male. We've got big B sperm or maybe little B sperm. And the same with the female. We've got big B eggs and maybe little B eggs. And we go through the same process here. If this sperm fuses with this egg, we end up with big B from there and a big B from there. If this sperm fuses with this egg, we get a different situation. We get a big B from mum and we get a little B from dad. So we end up with this 
heterozygous individual, two different alleles in a pair. Over here, say so this sperm fuses with this egg. And we'll end up with a big B from dad, a little B from mum. And then finally, this sperm and this egg. We'll end up with a little B there and a little B there. Now we have a different sort of ratio. How do we predict what the offspring are going to be like? Well, it's all down to probability because there is a possibility of each of these kind of sperm and each of these kind of eggs to actually be fusing. We call that random fusion of gametes. Okay? Now, these boxes each represent 25%. See your counting boxes. Okay? So there is a 1, 2, 3 box chance. So that is 25 plus 25 plus 25. That's a 75% chance of ending up with offspring which have black fur. And there's only a single box with little b, little b. So that's 25% chance of an individual with white fur. Now, there's another way of writing this. We call it 3 to 1 ratio. Okay? A phenotype ratio of 3 to 1. 3 black to 1 white. Okay? And it's all down to probability. Okay? There's a 75% chance that the individual produced will have black fur and a 25% chance that the offspring produced has white fur. Alright, last time. Different sort of situation. Here we have a heterozygous black rabbit and over here we have a white rabbit. So this individual over here, he can produce big B sperm. This individual uh, or little B sperm. And this individual here can produce little b eggs. So the white rabbit's the female again in this situation. So you combine again, just like before, big b, little b, big b, little b. So we take the big b and the little b. Here, though, we got little b from here and the little b from there, little b, little b, little b from here, little b from there, little b, little b. Okay, let's count the boxes. One two boxes for black, so that's 50% chance black. That leaves us two boxes left for white. One, two, so 25% plus 25% that's 50% white. Alright, so 50-50 chance of having a white bunny or a black bunny, or you could say a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? Okay, so hopefully that's given you um, a quick sort of overview of how to do it because uh, this is more revision from level one. If you're still not sure, um, click on the link that will come up soon and uh, that will take you to a more detailed slideshow on how to do monohypercrosses. Thank you.